Hello, this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill as I do every month to answer any questions you may have. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I redo every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. And then I compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical finds and new videos and articles that upload nearly every day to my website, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There's no ads, no corporate sponsorship, strictly non-commercial, not sell anything, just put up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. Let us get to your questions. All right. All right. Um, uh, let's uh, let's just uh, start at the top and go down um, until they get too crazy, and then I'll just pick them at random. Um, oh, uh, Maria says, which mushrooms are not safe to eat? There are some mushrooms, like uh, the I think one's called like the deadly the, oh the angel of death or something like that, something like that. Um, uh, there there are of course uh, mushrooms uh, that are that are deadly. I would encourage people not to forage for mushrooms. I'm actually a big fan of foraging for food. Um, I used to make all sorts of dishes with like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, milkweed pods and things, which of course you have to boil sufficiently long to destroy the toxins, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so, but, so I encourage people to stick to mushrooms that they get in their store. And even then there are, uh, there's one type of mushrooms, morel mushrooms that have to be cooked. Um, so you want need to make sure you cook your mushrooms, although I encourage people to cook all their mushrooms um, for the reason that I uh, describe um, in a ancient video now on nutritionfacts.org. In fact, um, I'm, uh, I uh, just compiled all the new research on, uh, on those um, toxins in, in raw mushrooms for my upcoming book. Uh, How Not to Age, be on December 2022. Um, uh, and uh, there's looks like some, there's some great recent review articles talking about, should we still be concerned about eating raw mushrooms? Um, and I can't wait to delve in and see what they actually say. So I will include that in my new book. Um, since there's apparently some anti-aging properties of certain mushrooms. I'm excited to learn all about that as well. All right. Let me just pick one at random here. This is Debbie Herrick saying I have to supplement uh, too much on a vegan diet. I do so much better adding a little meat. I have to supplement too much. I mean, the only supplement that vegans have to take is vitamin B12, critically important uh, for anyone eating a healthy diet uh, to get a regular, reliable source of vitamin B12. But that's it. Um, so, you know, other supplements I recommend, like vitamin D supplements, that's for everybody um, uh, who doesn't get sufficient sunlight because otherwise you're not going to probably going to have insufficient levels. Um, and, uh, so, uh, and, uh, you can even take, um, uh, and it's the way I do it, a supplement once a week. So 2000 micrograms of cyanocobalamin, um, cause about five bucks a year, get all the B12 you need. So, uh, one little chewable pill once a week, um, uh, shouldn't be, uh, too much of a, of a, of a burden for too many people. All right. Let's see what's next. Dr. Hyman states it's sugar that causes fatty liver disease, and you see the high fat diet ugh, because fat does not cause uh, lipogenesis. Um, uh, do you agree with that statement? Uh, uh, it's not either or, it's both. In fact, saturated fat is actually worse than sugar. It's actually been put to the test um, where they randomized people to eat excess sugar or excess saturated fat, and, ex and excess saturated fat was actually worse in terms of causing uh, um, uh, uh, liver inflammation, but that doesn't mean sugar is good for you. Um, and we're talking about industrial sugars. We're talking about sucrose and high fructose corn syrup. Um, and uh, and you can show this experimentally. Give people have people chug a whole bunch of soda, and you just and you can build up more fat in your liver. Not a good idea to eat um, excess sugar or excess saturated fat. Okay, what do we got next? How can I communicate to people about veganism in a positive way? Uh, aww. Um, that's very sweet of you, Sophia. Um, uh, um, you can, um, well, I think some people, well, I mean, 
Know thine audience is the answer, right? I mean, you, you have to know who you're talking to. So whether you're talking to a friend, whether you're talking to a classroom, whether you're talking to, I mean, you know, it depends what, um, what you'd like to, how you'd like to frame it. Um, but um, I think people like to hear about the positive things, the benefit. This is what it's going to do for your own health or for the planet or for pandemic risk or whatever, as opposed to this is really bad. So, you know, like my daily dozen is talking about here's all the great foods that you should, you know, fit into your diet. And yes, those foods, um, uh, uh, you know, are, are fantastic and mountains of nutrition and all sorts of um, unique, wonderful properties. But part of the daily dozen is, is wink, wink, it kind of crowds out some of the bad stuff. I mean, if you actually go through and check off that whole list, yeah, there's not a lot of room for crap at the end of the day. Um, and so talking about the benefits of some of the more healthful foods naturally can lead one to just kind of crowd out some of the less healthy foods. Um, and who doesn't want to be told to eat more of something? So you're like, wait a second, I have to eat more blueberries? Okay, that sounds delicious. Like, oh, it tastes good. And you get to live longer. That's what plant-based eating is all about. All right. Oh, um, uh, oh, it looks like there's a new, let's see what this does. Can people actually see this? Uh, no, I guess not. Oh, messages. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, good. Um, uh, there's a new, um, uh, there's a, there's a, I can actually show all the comments coming through here. Um, and so I, this is, you get a sense of, 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 uh, of what's out there. So I'll just pick one at random and see what happens. Oh, I actually have to pick it over here and see what happens. All right, what, um, this is from Jaden. What blood test should I ask for as a six-year vegan if I want to just get one, just to make sure I'm on top of everything? Oh, that's very sweet of you. Um, well, the only, um, so if you're feeling fine, um, then the only uh, blood test really that's recommended by the USPSTF, the United States Preventive Services Task Force, uh, which is kind of like the official body that determines what is important for kind of preventive medicine, um, is cholesterol. Um, you want to get your cholesterol taken. In fact, God, the earliest cholesterol, it used to be age 20, but I think it's now earlier than that. And then uh, get uh, another cholesterol checked every five. So it's fine. You want to get it checked every five years. Um, and so wait a second, wait a second. I mean, plant-based diet, do I really need to get cholesterol checked? Yes, you really need to get your cholesterol checked. Um, there are some uh, secondary causes of hypercholesterolemia, meaning high cholesterol independent of diet. So you want to make sure that's down. You say, wait a second, what's this hubbub about cholesterol? It's a primary risk factor for the number one killer, men and women. That's why we're so sensitive about making sure everyone's cholesterol is down. So, um, and that's just not for vegans. In fact, it's less important for vegans, but important for everyone. Um, so, but beyond that, um, uh, obviously, if you're not uh, supplementing with vitamin B12, uh, you get a uh, urine MMA uh, test. So it's not a blood test, it's a urine test. Um, get a sense if you're having enough vitamin B12. Should be You don't need to do that test if you're getting enough, which of course you should be. Um, uh, but um, if you haven't been, you want to see where you are. Um, if you're getting insufficient sunshine, you get vitamin D um, checked. But, um, but in general, in fact, I have a, a, t a series of two videos on one on uh, should you get an annual health check and she get an annual um, physical exam. And I talk about the data suggesting it may actually be harmful um, uh, in some cases. So check out those two videos if you're interested. Like, well, wait a second, you know, uh, shouldn't I just go see a doctor um, for the heck of it? All right, what do we have next? This is from Stephanie. I don't know if vitamin D3 is okay for a whole food plant-based because I read vitamin D2 is vegan rather than vitamin D3. Okay, there are vegan sources of both vitamin D2, which is sourced predominantly from um, uh, fungi, from mushrooms, um, and vitamin D3, which is sourced predominantly from sheep's wool, but is also from lichen, which is uh, kind of an uh, algae-based multicellular organism, but, uh, but not an animal. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, you can get vegan vitamin D3, um, you, um, all D2 is vegan, but, uh, D3 is probably preferable just because the studies showing, um, uh, increased, uh, increased longevity with vitamin D supplementation were all done on vitamin D3. Um, and so since that's what the studies were done on, we don't know if that necessarily translates to, um, 
uh, D2, so I would just use D3 if you have a choice. And if it's important for you to be vegan, you can get a vegan D3, no problem. Oh, and you know what else? Uh, I actually have a video coming up on this. Um, uh, I was always getting the, um, the like oil based, um, D3 thinking, well, it's fat sobbing. You know how there's like these little, like gel caps almost, uh, filled with, you know, D3 and oil. Um, and it's also, but there's also D3 in powder, like just powder, regular kind of capsules. And I was always buying the, the oily ones because I was like, well, um, you know, it's fat soluble. Maybe it's better absorbed that way. Um, it turns out, pff, nope, they put it to the test and it's equivalent. Um, the oil based pills are just the regular, it's like, you know, tied to rice starch or melted dextrin or something. Um, just a dry powder that eh, works just as good. And so now I switched over and just buy the cheaper stuff, um, which is just uh, powder form. Eh, okay. So that's cool. Um, so, uh, and I have a video coming out on that, but you're watching the Q and A and you get the sneak peek. Oh, 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 sorry. I accidentally clicked and I didn't see the last question. Sorry about that. Whoever that was. Ah, okay. Kim Robinson says, what are your thoughts on the unapproved, um, COVID vaccines? The FDA has approved for emergency use. So they are approved, but they're approved for emergency use. Why? Cause it's an emergency. Um, uh, and so, uh, I encourage people to get whichever vaccine you have a chance to get. Um, uh, the getting it sooner rather than later is the most important thing rather than one brand over another. And we now have, for most of these vaccines, literally tens of millions of people that have gone before us. So we know how safe it is. We know how effective it is. And we should thank our lucky stars. We have um, such a cornucopia of options. And I am patiently waiting my turn um, and hopefully by May 1st, most states um, will uh, um, be vaccinating the entire populace and I will be first in line and looking very much forward to it. Okay, Grace says, is there a proper order? Oh, yes. How cool is that? Is there a proper order to floss, brush, and rinse with green tea? This and when you, if for anyone is saying rinse with green tea, what kind of craziness is that? I did a video about rinsing. Uh, I did a video about, I don't know if it was actually a combination of green tea and amla or two separate videos talking about the um, health, the usefulness of amla, which is powdered uh, Indian gooseberries, um, and separately green tea on periodontal health, on uh, on keeping the, your gums healthy. Um, uh, and then I just put them together, but I did recommend people add some amla and green tea and swish it around their mouth. And in fact, if I walked over to the fridge right now, I'd have it and I could show it to you and I do it every night. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, wonderful stuff. Okay. But uh, aside from that, what about the proper order? Um, and uh, I've, uh, the fact that this questioner was smart enough to know about the green tea stuff, um, but still asked this question means that the video I wrote about proper sequence obviously hasn't been put up on the website yet. I forget which ones are up and which ones not are in the queue. But no, there's so every single randomized controlled trial of flossing brushing sequence every single one i think there's only been two or three but every single one so the best available data we have um says that you should floss first whoa so um if you were in the floss first camp you are right um uh yeah it's fascinating because you can imagine it both ways intuitively and but nope all right so um and then uh uh and the rinse with green tea i would do at the end um, because then you would have that residue because then otherwise if you just rinse with green tea, then you're brushing it off. Um, but if you uh, rinse afterward, but if you floss, then brush, then rinse, there'll still be some amla green tea residue in your mouth when you go to bed. Um, uh, and when you start your day, whenever you brush, then it'll kind of last a little longer. I mean, that's not actually been put to the test, but that's just my thinking. Anyway. All right, let's go. Next up. Uh, Rennie says, if I could con ooh, conduct a study on what topic would it be? What topic? Oh my God. There's so much, um, so much research that needs to be done. Um, I'm, uh, I think reversal data is particularly, um, compelling. So uh, when you talk, it's like prevention is unexciting when you, when prevention works, nothing happens. Right? So it's like, woohoo, I don't have cancer today. Boy, my prevention has been kicking ass. 
okay, it doesn't have the same thrill as someone who has some horrible disease, and then you do something, and then the horrible disease goes away. That's really compelling, right? You want to get people to eat healthier? That's the sexy stuff. Not like, you won't get breast cancer if you do this for the next 20 years. Not as exciting. Okay. Uh, and so one of the arenas where I think a reversal would be um, potentially really exciting, low back pain. Low back pain causes a tremendous amount of disability. Um, and we have all this data talking about um, the, uh, the, uh, the correlations between high cholesterol levels and low back pain. And you can do MRIs of people's spines, look at the vertebral arteries, which are feeding the discs, feeding the spine, and you can uh, correlate the low back pain with the clogging of the arteries and the closing off with atherosclerosis. Um, and, so, uh, and so maybe we're just robbing um, our intervertebral discs, which are actually avascular, they don't have any, um, you know, arteries or veins inside them. So nutrients just have to diffuse in, waste products have to diffuse out. Very sensitive, I think, uh, potentially to uh, poor circulation. So, um, uh, so in terms of preventing low back pain, one would think that a artery healthy diet, right, a diet centered around whole plant foods, would be good in terms of preventing, but. If that's the case, wouldn't it, um, wouldn't it stand to reason that if you went on a really healthy diet, maybe you could, you know, um, uh, improve the function of these arteries, you know, with a nitrate-rich diet, lots of nitrate-rich vegetables, um, and uh, maybe we could uh, improve the blood flow to our spine, and maybe our back pain would go away. That would be great to be able to tell people. And I do tell people um uh, to eat healthier but it's never actually been put to the test and i'd love to randomize people um to a healthier diet versus kind of a more standard diet and see if we can actually improve back pain with reverse back pain with a healthy diet never been tried i'd love to see that study okay what else next should i enigma 981 asks not to be confused with enigma 980 should i inspire aspire to uh, to feed my two-year-old according to the daily, oh, the daily dozen, any tips on getting young kids? Ah, okay. Um, uh, obviously the daily dozen uh, 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 amounts way off for a two-year-old. Um, and in fact, it's particularly important for young children um, to get really nutrient and calorically dense foods in their little tummies because they have such little tummies, right? So, um, I mean, they need lots of calories to grow. Um, one of the benefits of whole healthy plant foods is they're so calorically dilute. And we have this massive, no pun intended, obesity epidemic. And so the fact that you can stuff yourself to the brim with all this food and have very few calories in your stomach, that's a fantastic thing for adults, for overweight adults. But for little kids, um, uh, you know, you could, little kid eats a lot of salad, they're not going to have enough calories to grow. Um, or nutrition for that matter. So they need to be really calorically dense foods. Um, and uh, so, but in terms of, are those same foods healthy for all ages? Yes. Uh, with the exception, of course, uh, infancy where human breast milk is the only way to go, even um, uh, into, uh, into your two-year-old, but um, in addition to starting to eat real food. Um, so... Uh, Daily dozen foods are still good, um, but obviously um, uh, the, 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 the daily dozen uh, quantities are for adults because there's a huge amount of food on purpose. Um, oh, cadet of space. Sorry. I was, I was trying to parse those syllables there. Can you synthesize enough vitamin D during the warm months to last you throughout winter? Okay. Well... Yes, in terms of enough vitamin D to live. Um, uh, I mean, that's the whole point is that uh, during the uh, summer months, you know, we got high latitudes, you build up enough and it's stored in your fat and you kind of live through the winter and then you get more um, the next year. But do you have enough in your body for optimal health? That we don't know the answer. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, and we suspect that it's probably, you probably dip too low. And indeed, you see that, um, uh, uh, you know, the, that study, the Oxford um, uh, study on uh, vegans in the UK, high latitude, um, vitamin D perfect in the summer, it dips um, too low during the winter months. 
Um, and uh, so uh, it's probably good when you're getting insufficient sunshine to supplement your diet with vitamin D. And I would recommend uh, you know, 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day for anyone getting insufficient sun. Doesn't matter where you live, even in the warmer months, if you're inside all day, doesn't matter how much sun there is outside, you're not going to make enough because it actually it, it relies on cutaneous exposure without sunblock, without clothes. Anyway, okay, next. Oh, oh, congr okay, congratulations. Okay, next. Why can't I do next? Okay, next. Okay, Andrew says, I suspect dairy has a negative effect on male fertility. Um, uh, I know saturated fat consumption does. Uh, um, I have a video on saturated fat and, and uh, fertility. So, um, but uh, skim milk doesn't have any. So I wonder if um, uh, the hormones or the, the dairy protein, whatever, have an effect. I don't remember. Um, I, I would go to nutritionfacts.org, type fertility or type sperm into uh, the search bar and uh, in dairy and see if anything pops up. So good question. Um, uh, the only one that pops to mind off the top of my head is um, saturated fat. And dairy is actually the number one source of saturated fat. People think of saturated fat, they think of like steak or something. But no, actually dairy, number one source of saturated fat in the country. Um, and so that's how most people um, get their saturated fat intake. Okay. I think number two is actually chicken just because we eat so much chicken. Um, if uh, Rebecca says it's 1350 calories enough from exercising. Um, uh, the, uh, it all depends on how, if you are this tall, um, uh, so, uh, um, uh, uh, resting metabolic rate, um, how much you kind of need on a, on an hourly basis, um, depends not only on your activity rate, but actually on your body mass, how big you are, how many cells you have and how active are those cells. And so, um, but there's a whole bunch of thing, there's a whole bunch of calculators online where you can calculate exactly how much you need based on your activity level and your size. Okay. Oh, John Moore says, does cooking degrade the ALA to the health of compounds like lignans and flax and chia seeds? What is ALA? Alpha linolenic acid. That's the short chain omega threes found in flax and chia, and it does not degrade. Um, so uh, you know, I've uh, videos on flax talking about how you can bake, you know, flaxseed muffins at 350 for however long it said in the video and no decrement in uh, the omega-3 content. Now, that is not the case with flaxseed oil, right? So flaxseed oil can oxidize, can turn bad even at no heating, <laughs> just at room temperature, even in the fridge if left long enough um, because it's lacking all the protective compounds that come in the whole food, um, including that hard natural hull. Um, but even ground flax seeds in an airtight container, even at room temperature, last for months without any decrement in omega-3 content. Um, but because in the flax seed itself, it's packed with all these antioxidants and other compounds that prevent the uh, oil gain rancid. You extract out all the good stuff you left with just the oil. It is very sensitive. So that's well, one of the reasons we should eat um, foods in whole food form. Okay, Valerie says, would it be a good, would, what would be, uh, what would be a good DHA level, an EPA level on an omega-3 blood test? Mine will indicate the optimum level, all omegas together. Um, uh, yeah, no, so uh, there is, I'm trying to think, the, the most popular one is like a blood spot, spot test where uh, they send you a little lancet and you, and you poke yourself and you bleed onto a little piece of paper and you send it back and they give you... Um, uh, and I think it's a percentage fatty acids in kind of blood cell membranes compared to total, I don't remember. Um, but, um, if you have sufficient omega-3s, I would assume that you're, um, uh, let's see, do they, they must do the long chains. You know, I have to look into that. That's a good question. I, um, don't know. I'm sure it depends on which test. And I don't even remember the test of which I'm talking about now, so it doesn't really help anybody. Um, but that's something you could contact the testing lab and be like, wait a second, what does it exactly show? And, uh, and how can I kind of further fractionate out my results? Okay, next up. Oh, keeps coming, then disappears. Sorry. 
I'm clicking and it doesn't show up, so I click again and then I erase the other one. Come on. There we go. Okay. Michael uh, Demaria says, popcorn, quote unquote, butter. I love popcorn. Or plant based butters, which is primarily oil based, healthy for you. I've heard parts of the world might not be healthy, if not better alternatives. Yeah, um, so actually both. So both of the, the butter flavoring, the, the, the compounds that make kind of artificial butter flavor, are themselves bad. And I have uh, uh, videos about that. There's actually something called popcorn lung, um, which is a disease not only um, that affects workers and plants that produce these, uh, but um, in people that who uh, eat too much microwave popcorn. Um, they're actually breathing in this this toxic butter flavor substance um, and is scarring up their lungs. Um, and that's a separate issue from the um, from right from the fat. Um, it's typically in kind of a plant-based uh, butters is palm oil, um, which is uh, particularly bad in terms of our LDL cholesterol, a bad cholesterol. Um, there are a few tropical oils, palm oil, palm kernel oil, coconut oil. They're actually, the few uh, rare instances of plant based oils being high in saturated fat and they raise your um, LDL cholesterol just like lard and tallow and um, uh, uh, um, butter fat. So um, yes, better to have unbuttered popcorn. You say, wait a second, how do I make it taste good? Well, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, so uh, what I do, I have a right over there, I can see it right now, I have a little spritzer bottle. Um, and you can fill that spritzer bottle with anything you want to. I have it right now filled with a little um, either malt vinegar or right now I have apple cider vinegar. Um, um, and you spritz it on just to make it to make stuff stick to it. And then you pile seasonings onto it. Um, and so uh, there's something called ben Benson's Table Tasty. And there's actually a bunch of salt-free um, seasonings out there that actually taste like salt. Um, uh, so that and nutritional yeast and garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, all sorts of, I mean, whatever you like, obviously you can do chili powder, you can do whatever. And instead of spritzing with, um, with some vinegar, you can drip some, uh, Tabasco on and then add your seasonings and you mix it all up and it sticks to it and it's delicious and it's healthful. And, you know, you can do chlorella, make zombie corn, which we used to call it in our family because it's like bright green and makes your fingers green. And anyway all sorts of things to make your popcorn delicious. And of course, we're talking about your pop popcorn, popcorn, um, a healthful snack. Okay, Johnny says, if I had only one thing to say to someone about optimal health, ugh, what is everything you would say? Well, if I only had one thing, it wouldn't be, um, I would say eat a diet centered around whole plant foods since diet is so that would be even a more important than telling someone to stop smoking for example a smoker to stop smoking um, um well okay i'd tell a smoker to stop smoking um uh, but in general um the american diet actually kills more people than tobacco um according to the global burden of disease study the largest study of uh, disease risk factors in history funded by the bill and melinda gates foundation so if diet is the number one killer i'd tell people to eat the healthiest diet which is one centered Run whole plant foods. Okay, Rennie says, what is the connection between hiccups? Oh, hiccups after eating should I be a word. It happens like one, two times a week. Um, uh, so, um, hic oh, I've got a bunch of, oh, I had a whole series. It's such a fascinating feeling, a whole series on hiccups and what you can do to stop your hiccups. Um, just to type in hiccups in nutritionfacts.org. Um, uh, I would, uh, it's not something I'd worry about unless you had intractable hiccups, um, uh, meaning hiccups that wouldn't go away. Um, Eric newcomer says, what's the verdict on canned coconut milk? Will chickpea curry kill me? Um, uh, so canned coconut milk, um, is high in sensory fat, high in coconut oil. Um, and so raise your LDL cholesterol. Now, look, if you're, if you are otherwise eating this perfect, amazing diet, um, and you have your genetics such your LDL cholesterol is, you know, <sighs> under 70, if you haven't had a heart attack or under you know, 30, 40, 50, if you have had uh, known heart disease, and if your cholesterol is that low, right. Um, uh, and, uh, you don't have other heart disease risk factors. Well, then coconut curry, since that's all we really care about, um, is the effects it has on our uh, cardiovascular system. 
well then, uh, you know, go for it. You probably couldn't get away eating it every day um, and, and keeping your cholesterol that long. But if you want to uh, get your cholesterol tested and then eat coconut curry or whatever kind of interval you want and then get it retested and it really doesn't go up that much, well, then go for it. That's the only reason I uh, care about it. Um, uh, so, but, uh, you know, I would just try to use as little as possible and think of all other ways. You, I mean, if you want something creamy, you could blend some cashews. Um, and, uh, and if you want something coconutty, you could sprinkle on some, you know, uh, dry coconut flakes. So wait a second. It doesn't coconut flakes, unsweetened coconut flakes have coconut oil in them. Yes, but they also have plant protein and they also have fiber such that actually has a neutral effect on your cholesterol. Um, uh, does not raise your cholesterol like isolated, um, coconut oil does. And unfortunately, ah, time flies when you're having fun. Um, I've, uh, Got a bunch more interviews I got to run off to. Um, so sorry about that. But make sure I uh, have a, a webinar coming out next month on SIBO and leaky gut. Really excited about that. We don't yet have a link up. So uh, um, don't want to confuse people. But um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can um, subscribe. Um, and uh, there's Twitter. There's Facebook. This is going way too fast. Sorry for everybody. Um, and of course, please support, uh, consider supporting our work. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we're kind of a Wikipedia model where we just, uh, um, uh, everything's free. And if uh, and the only reason we continue to go is because one in a thousand people kicks in a few bucks and poof, we got a staff of more than a dozen folks and uh, we can put out all this wonderful stuff. So you don't have to do the research yourself. Thanks everybody. Bye. See you next month.